Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Sharif Magid. I'm a facility manager, and that's it. No more titles. Uh, thank you, Fernando, for the inspiring speech. I promise you I'll do my best and uh, be my best as well. Okay. When David uh, told me about the theme, he called pest. This, this word in, in, uh, in Egypt, it's, we call it for the cats. When you go, want to call the cat, you call it pst. So I laugh because it's, uh, it's ironic. Uh, I'm a facility manager who never thought about having this passion to a profession other than engineering. To the extent that I started teaching, I never thought myself standing in front of people or students and uh, giving a speech. One of the ironic things and lovely things as well is that my first lecture in foundation of FM, I teach my students the different meanings of FM. Okay? And one of these meanings is written by Alexander Keith. I never met him. It's the first time to see him today. And I teach them uh, what he says, which is the process by which an organization delivers and sustains support services in a quality environment to meet strategic needs. This is different from ISO meaning or IFMA meaning or whatever. So it's nice to have different meanings of FM, and I'm glad that I met you today. Okay. Climate change and the need to design and operate apartment buildings with optimum plan made us think about the way forward for easy operations and maintenance. The recent trends require critical, critical concentration from a user perspective on comfort, acoustics, and green environment design. The change in technology and the availability of sustainable products are helping to overcome these challenges. Sustainability now is going viral in the world and Egypt, and Egypt also is hosting COP27 next November. This presentation explains the initiatives taken to supply comfort and highlights the importance of the green environment to occupants and applies it on a case study at the AUC faculty housing. All right. Uh, FM in Egypt uh, and Africa are still developing, but su surprisingly, we have the same challenges as you have here and still have here in Europe. So it's encouraging for us. And it's also inspiring because it will allow us to mitigate these challenges and make it in a better way uh, in the future. Um, I think the human nature are more inclined to save natural resources than anything else. So 10 years ago, we had a faculty housing building built, uh, I think, in 2012. And we had a replica being built again in 2013. And by coincidence, I was in a conference and knew about sustainability. And I went back to Egypt and said, OK, why not try this and have uh, 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 these initiatives or green initiatives done in one of the buildings. So I made a business case. I had to talk their, their language, and I talked about money and return on investment, and thankfully, they accepted the business case and went quickly from there. So in the business case, I had a short-term plan and a long-term plan. And the short-term one is, uh, is institutionalized <laughs> sorry, sustainability, and to be the first lead certified building on campus, and to have energy savings and emission reductions, which was quite a, a challenging thing to have in Egypt. We didn't have the materials, we didn't have uh, the mindset and awareness of sustainability yet. And uh, the long-term plan was to have sustainability in the curriculum, teached in the, or taught in the university, and to have a green campus at large, and to set policies and guidelines in the whole of Egypt. This will be the outline that we are going to talk about now. It's a cube. We're going to talk about trends, rental and marketability, why green matter, and the operational challenges, payback, commitment, 
and the way forward and green to greener. Okay, the trends in the operational or residential buildings uh, uh, are pre-COVID and post-COVID. Pre-COVID, it was comfortable. We had need to have a comfortable residential building to stay in. There's some amenities, there's gym, maybe, maybe a market nearby. It has to be convenient and reliable. And we had to work and go out and have some fun um, going around without any concerns in our environment. And we used the DSL or internet just for fun, for entertainment, watching Netflix or watching any video or YouTube or whatever. But when COVID came, it changed all the lives of the whole world and maybe also in Egypt. We had to be energy efficient. People were looking for need for daylight all over the building and specifically looking for apartments. Maybe I should say that our faculty apartments are used for expats coming from abroad and they specify what their preferred places or apartments would look like. And also, they started working from home. Nobody was coming to the university for a year or so, except for emergencies, and it had to be a healthy environment as well. The need for high speed, thank God we have a fiber optics cable going to these buildings through the university. It's a nearby uh, building, so it was very good and very reliable, and it was also good for learning and earning. This building being a green building, back then it was not uh, known for everybody what is green, what is sustainability and so on, but we had to promote and make people aware of it and uh, uh, had to make it um, feasible as well in, in, in terms of money. Uh, the competition around us, because we rent apartments to faculty, and around us uh, there are lots of buildings with lower uh, values, so there was a lot of com competition, but we had the green edge of having this building with green initiatives. We didn't have, um, how do you say it, <coughs> we didn't have uh, marketability a lot and awareness for, for the faculty, but we had to make it clear for them. And the, we had first building plot number one, which called plot one and plot three, was a replica, uh, exactly the mirror image for, the, for themselves. And people started, after making this awareness uh, sessions, people started to move from plot one to plot three, and we were expecting about 25% of occupancy. We reached about 57% just for being green. There was no plaque, there was no uh, certificates like LEED or BRAIM or whatever, but just for having these kind of amenities there and green initiatives, people opted to go to the green building. And saying to them, what should I pay more? They didn't, they paying more for our building, not for the others, because simply it was green. It has uh, no toxic buildings, lighter footprint, uh, low VOCs, uh, refrigerants, uh, non-CFC, and so on. Okay, people also ask themselves why green buildings or green residential buildings matter. Uh, they are inclined to save natural resources, which is by human nature is very good, and saving energy. Uh, the metering process is uh, innovative. We have Schneider uh, uh, green, our smart uh, meters, that tells them what they did each, each day exactly. Uh, the housekeeping, we use uh, green materials. Uh, there's cost control for every aspect in the building. We have a waste management process. Uh, of course, it will be lower operating cost and, and a higher market value for the building on the long run. And this also had a renewable energy uh, solar panels. What were our challenges? The most big challenge or biggest chance we had in this building was the scarcity of materials. 
we had no materials to supply for this building. We had to import all the, uh, to export all the materials from abroad, mostly. Uh, for example, the non-CFC uh, refrigerant was not available. We had only R22. We had to import R407, refrigerant 407, uh, to have it uh, uh, applied in the building. Uh, there's also the, the PV panels for electric water heaters was not available or available with a small quantity and maybe people were not experienced in using it, but we had to buy it as well. These two uh, uh, things were the most expensive uh, in the uh, building. We had, uh, the business case was only 5% of the whole budget, which is uh, acceptable at that time. And as I said, we had a waste disposal or waste management system, and uh, we had to let uh, people buy sustainable materials like uh, the, the paint, the LEDs, the, we had also bike racks, and one nice thing more is the green roof. Green roof was not very well known in, in Egypt at that time as well. As I said, the AC refrigerants were very expensive. The solar uh, uh, panels were also expensive, and these two items were the very the, the most expensive things in our uh, ROI. There's no payback in, in these two, but we had to convince the, business, the administration that the marketability of the building and the green initiatives will overcome uh, these two items. The percentage of occupancy rose to 57 instead of 25 at the first year. The green roof was appreciated very well by the, build, by, by the building tenants. And this was all the business case that we built for our administration, and they accepted it. Okay, our commitment to the environment will result in uh, having ecologically oriented uh, building. Uh, and we're hoping to lead the country by example. AUC is one of the elite universities in, in Egypt, so that had to be an example, good example for, an, for the rest of the buildings, of, for the rest of the country. Uh, we'll have a positive impact on the local environment and the community, which allows us to also have a positive image for AUC and to keep this image growing. And one of the, the most important things is to increase the awareness and motivate the action for the community around us, whether in the near neighborhood or at Egypt at large, and also to allow them to explore the best practices they can follow afterwards. One of the short-term plans as well was to have a lead lab. Being a university, education is the heart of our business and we had to give back to it. So we had our professors. This guy on the left is a sustainability professor, Dr. Khaled uh, Tarabia. And uh, I worked with him on having this building as a lead lab, and he gets his students to go around the building and see what initiatives we can do and how it can help them to grow in the course. As you can see, these are the uh, green roof and the people on the right are the people who implemented the green roof and they were uh, describing to the students what happened at that time. And this is also the solar panels but in the, from the back and it was a new aspect uh, to the Egyptian community as well. This is a quick uh, comparison between plot one and plot three if you go to the left, the right side, it's 55,000 uh, uh, kilowatt hour compared to 38. So we're saving about 50 or 40 percent, exactly 40 percent less energy consumption, with uh, an occupancy rate for this building about 57 or 60 percent at that time. So what is the way forward is to have mitigation for water challenges and energy and carbon emissions 
we try to decrease our carbon emissions as much as possible, uh, to use more green materials, and uh, to apply the waste management to all the buildings. We have about three buildings now, and we have more three to go. Uh, we're also using BMS, and maybe we have to increase the, the usage of it uh, uh, on the long run. And finally, it's that we applied at the end to a LEED certificate. Maybe, maybe in a few years, we'll not be there. People will know, not know about what did we do. So a plaque would maybe say something about what we've done. Last thing is that we didn't stop. We're going every day from green to greener. Uh, we have to go more and develop more and improve more each day so that it wouldn't stop with what we have done. And the LEED certificate is one of the things that we're going. And maybe in the future we'll think about going from obsolescence to circularity. Thank you very much for being here. It's an honor.